For the last several years, this is what our food storage has looked like. Everything was crammed into the upper kitchen cabinets and there was no organization whatsoever. Now that I've finally renovated the pantry and I got all of my new shelving built in, it's time to finally get all of this food taken out of the kitchen cabinets and organized in my actual pantry. To get started, I just started unloading everything from the cabinets. As I pulled stuff out of the cabinets, I checked the expiration dates and threw away anything that was expired. I started with all of the canned goods and I kept everything that was canned together in one spot. Once I had all of the cans laid out on my desk, I started pulling out everything else and I continued to group stuff together. So I tried to keep all of the sides together in one area. Then I grouped together the snacks. I kept the noodles in one pile, the condiments in another pile, and was just thinking about making it easier for myself when I finally start putting things in bins so that they'll already be kind of grouped together how I'm wanting them to be in the pantry. And this is a good example of why I need an organized pantry. I have three entire bottles of mustard and we hardly ever use mustard in this house. We don't need more than one bottle. I have a son with diet restrictions. So over here, I made a pile of all of the stuff that he can eat. Up until now, all of this has been up in a cabinet that he could not reach very easily. So my plan is to give him a shelf where all of his stuff goes and he knows it's his and he can grab it and access his snacks easily. Once I was done unloading all of his stuff into this area, I just continued unloading everything else that was left in the cabinets. And once I had completely filled up the top of this desk, I moved over to the dining room table, which is right across from it, and completely filled that up as well. At this point, I finally had everything unloaded. And to be honest with you, I was a little overwhelmed just looking at how much I really had to organize. But I did pick up a bunch of different bins and baskets and canisters at the Dollar Tree. So I know I'm going to be able to tackle this project without spending very much money at all. I found these canisters at Dollar Tree and they're absolutely perfect. They are clear with white lids and they came in two different sizes. I bought several in each size and just used whichever size was going to fit the bag of what I needed it to fit best. So the smaller ones were perfect for things like beans or brown sugar, which we don't keep a whole lot of. And the larger containers are good for things like flour and sugar that I tend to buy in bigger bags. As I unloaded everything into these canisters, I wrote down the name and the expiration date on a sticky note and stuck that to the lid just to help keep track of everything until I get to the labels. Dollar Tree also has these smaller clear jars with lids. I bought these for little amounts of stuff that I just don't buy very often, like this cocoa powder. We had some left over, but I probably won't buy it again for a while. So this was a good way to store a small amount of something without having to leave it in the original container.
Once I was done with the canisters and I had those set aside, I started working on the rest of the food and getting everything organized in the different bins and baskets that I had picked up at the Dollar Tree. I bought several different sizes because I wasn't really sure what was going to fit best in the pantry or what sized bins I would need to fit the different foods in. So this was just kind of a process of trial and error, figuring out what was going to fit best with what and in which bins. I had to make a grocery run while I was working on this project and I figured it was perfect timing since I could just organize all my groceries while I'm already organizing all the stuff for the pantry. It drives me crazy when cereal goes stale so I really wanted some airtight containers to be able to pour our cereal into. I also wanted them to have the pop lid that way we can pop the lid open, pour the cereal out and close it back up pretty easily for the kids. I searched at Dollar Tree and they didn't have anything like that that I could find. So I scoured Amazon and I found this set of four containers that were a really good price. And these ended up working out perfectly because an entire box of cereal fits perfectly into one of these containers. After ordering these and being so happy with how well they worked out, I really wanted them in a larger size for the larger family-sized bags of cereal that we buy. I ended up finding some in this exact same brand. They're identical to these. They're just a little bit bigger. And they were perfect for those larger bags of cereal that are, I think, 40-something ounces. And I was able to fit a full bag into one of those larger containers. And I'll link both of these different sizes down in the description box. Once I was done with this cereal, I just got the rest of my groceries sorted out into the bins and baskets with the rest of the food. I've been waiting for the moment to Before I start bringing in all of the bins and the baskets, I have one more piece of storage that I want to add to this pantry. I scoured Amazon looking for a very specific type of over the door organizer and I found this one. I wanted it to be metal and not plastic or fabric and I also wanted it to span the full height of the door as well as have multiple adjustable baskets. And this was the least expensive one that I found that checked all of those boxes and also had really good reviews. The only suggestion that I would make if you decide to purchase this same organizer is to use zip ties when connecting the metal bars that hang from the door. They have this little metal lip that connects them together, but when you open and close the door and the organizer moves, those can come undone the lip can slip out causing the bars to detach and the bottom half of the organizer to fall. So I ordered these zip ties that came with self-adhesive mounting plates. 
These worked perfectly because they stuck to the door. Then when I ran the zip tie in between the two metal bars, the zip tie runs through that plate behind the bars and that keeps the organizer from moving or banging around on the door as I open and close it. So I decided to use those at each of the places where the bars had to be connected. Then I also added one to the very top and the very bottom on both sides of the organizer as well. Then once I was done with this organizer, I was ready to start moving stuff into the pantry. I wanted to utilize the floor space in my pantry without just setting things on the floor. I've seen other people use laundry baskets in their pantries for similar types of storage and I thought that that was just a great idea. We usually have two or three cases of water just stacked on top of each other next to the refrigerator. So this is a great alternative to that and it gets all of them out of the pack and the kids can easily just grab one and go. I used a Another one for all of our cans of Coke, which also usually just sit in the case until we use them. And I still have a few empty baskets left over for anything else that we need storage for down the road. Next, I started bringing in all of the buckets and the bins and just getting them organized on the shelves, figuring out where I wanted everything to go. As I was moving everything into the pantry, I quickly figured out that I did not want to use those smaller organizers. I just felt like I wasn't able to store as much in the space that they took up than I would be able to if I moved all of those items out of those smaller organizers and into a larger bin. I also felt like it just gave the pantry a more cohesive look, having all of the bins or the baskets be matching on each shelf. Thankfully, I had only put a handful of things into the smaller organizers. So as I continued to move everything into the pantry, I just condensed what I did have in those into the other bins. And I just continued to lay everything out on the shelves and figure out exactly where I wanted it all to go. Since this middle shelf is right at my eye level, I decided to make this the area where most of my daily cooking or easy reach items would go. So I ordered a couple of Lazy Susans off of Amazon and they're gonna go in either corner and I can use these for olive oil or jars of spaghetti sauce or anything else that's not going in a bin that I want to be able to access quickly. I also ordered some new spice jars and I wanted a spice rack that matched the Lazy Susans and that'll go on this wall to the right when you walk into the pantry. Then I'm using these shelf risers from the Dollar Tree to organize all of our canned goods on the back wall along this middle shelf. The spice jars that I ordered came with labels already printed, but I decided to make my own. I want all of the labels in my pantry to match, and it's a pretty easy process to just do yourself. 
I'm not going to do a full tutorial on how I made these labels today, but if you're interested, let me know down in the comment section and I can include that video later on. There are also several tutorials out there on YouTube on how to make your own labels. I designed all of my labels using Canva, then I printed them onto sticker paper and used my Cricut machine to cut them out. Then I just attached the labels to the front of all of my spice jars. Out of everything that I did in this pantry, the spice jars might be the thing I was the most excited for. Where we were keeping all of our spices and herbs before this renovation was a really crammed space and we didn't have enough room to really expand on the spices and the herbs that we were keeping. So as soon as I ordered these jars, I started stocking up on all of the herbs and spices that I really wanted. So I was really excited to be finally filling all of these jars up. And I was able to save all of the jars that I emptied for my daughter to reuse. Once I had all of the spice jars labeled, I moved them into the pantry and organized them on top of the spice rack. I had a few jars that were still empty or really close to being empty, so I placed those on the very back of the spice rack, and then I placed all of the spices and herbs that I use on a regular basis on the very front. I still had a few larger containers of seasonings or marinades that would not fit into the spice jars, so I just stacked those up neatly to the right of the spice rack. Now that I had everything moved into the pantry and everything was organized the way that I wanted it to be, I was able to make a list of all of the labels I needed for the bins and the baskets and get those made. And again, I made these the same way that I made the labels for my spice jars. I designed them in Canva, then I printed them onto sticker paper and used my Cricut machine to cut them out. Once all of my labels were ready, I removed everything from the pantry just going one shelf at a time and started applying the labels to all of my bins and my baskets. If you knew ahead of time exactly what was going to end up going in every single one of your bins, you could do this before you even began organizing your pantry. But for me, I had no idea going into this project what was going to go in each container and how many of those containers I would need. So it just ended up working out best for me to do it this way and to wait to do the labeling until the very end. So once I finished labeling one row of items, I put those back in the pantry and then pulled out the next row. Now that everything is labeled and put away, I wanna give you guys a quick tour of where everything ended up going in this pantry. All of our canister items and our cereal containers fit perfectly together side by side on this top shelf. On the next shelf down, I have a bin full of breakfast items and another one with condiments, one with our different types of breading and chicken and beef stock, I have two bins with boxed dinners and our boxes of pasta. Then I have two bins of all of our different side items and another bin full of nothing but macaroni. On the next shelf, I dedicated an entire bin for just mom and dad's snacks so that we have stuff that we can keep for ourselves. Then I put all of our pasta sauces in that one corner. All of our canned goods are in this middle shelf. And then this next corner on the Lazy Susan, there's our olive oil and vinegar and stuff like that. And then all of our seasonings. 
Then the whole right hand side of this next shelf is all of my son's items. With all of his stuff going on the second to the bottom shelf, he can reach everything easily himself. Then there's two bins with nothing but snacks for the kids and then a bin with nothing but crackers. On the bottom shelf, I have two bins that are dedicated to chips, one bin that's just completely full of ramen noodles, two bins for breads and bagels, a bin for cookies and sweets, and then two bins for popcorn. Then on the floor, we have all of our water bottles, our cans of Coke, and then I have some apple juice and some other snacks. Then I have all of our other random stuff that fit into this organizer over the door. This has been perfect for storing stuff like trash bags, sandwich bags, aluminum foil, saran wrap, and then we have our disposable bags that we use whenever we cook in the crock pot. Then above that, I have all of our containers of Clorox wipes and Lysol spray and the distilled white vinegar that I usually use to clean with. Then I have all of the clothespins and this container that we use to close up the chip bags. And I moved all of our cold brew coffee and the powdered creamer into the door instead of it being in one of the bins in the cabinet, as well as the smaller containers of the cocoa powder and marshmallows and the tea bags that we just didn't have a whole lot left of any of those things. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this pantry makeover turned out. I spent very little on this project and I feel like it looks worth so much more than it cost. Again, everything that I bought was either from the Dollar Tree or it was extremely affordable on Amazon. I will link all of those items down in the description box for anybody that's interested. I really hope you guys got something out of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite part of this pantry is. Thanks for watching this video and until next time you can check out one of these videos linked right here.